Beard ban backlash. Muslim security guard sues the U.S. State Department. The Council on American Islamic Relations, or CARE for short, one of our favorite organizations, is suing the U.S. State Department and Secretary Antony Blinken on behalf of the security guard, Devin Brooks, who alleges religious discrimination. Brooks claims the department forced him to shave his beard, a violation of his Islamic faith, which he claims mandates a fist-length beard. The State Department reportedly denied his request, citing safety concerns. The agency argued that longer beards could potentially be a liability in a physical confrontations as they could be grabbed or used to manipulate the guards, potentially exposing their weapons. CARE's lawsuits counters that these safety concerns are not sincere as Brooks was allowed to keep a longer beard during his time at a different branch, the Department of Homeland Security. Brooks, who was taken off active duty and placed on administrative leave and unpaid leave, is seeking compensation for economic and emotional damages, among other fees. The State Department has yet to comment on the pending litigation. So let's make this very simple. There was a security guard who worked for the U.S. State Department. He wanted to have a longer beard as long as a fist. They said, no, you can have a beard, but it has to be trimmed to no longer than like half an inch. And he refused. He wouldn't do this. And they eventually pay some, pay, put him on leave and then unpaid leave. And then, you know, he, he says that this damaged his career and his opportunities, blah, blah, blah. Over time, he ended up going to the Department of Homeland Security, where he has a similar job, but he is allowed to keep his beard. And now he is suing the former department that he used to work for, for discrimination. Now, this is really interesting to me because I actually have never heard of beards being mandatory for men. I I went to go do some research on this. I could not find a single Islamic school of thought that mandates that men have a fist length beard. There are most of them say that it's recommended, but it's a personal choice. So I don't fully understand is, is this an Islamic mandate or can you just say that this is a mandate and then that's enough? Do you get what my question is? I'm like, is this really actually required? Like a hijab is obligatory. That's not question, right? By any major school of yeah. thought. But the beard, I've, I couldn't find any of them saying that it's mandatory. So that, yeah, what do you think Taliban about that? Says, um, I mean, there are some schools of thought within Islam that thinks it's mandatory. Man, I mean, I just was. Yeah, I mean, the Taliban beats the crap out of people who cut the like. There are people in uh, that that uh, barber shops that the Taliban comes and beats the crap out of you just because you shave someone's beard, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but so there are very rare schools of thought. But the thing is that do we want to get into this conversation? I mean, of uh, like for legal reasons to go with, to see whether something is halal or haram within Islam? No, like, that's the Indian model, and I don't like it. <laughs> are we now to the point where we're trying to decide what's law based on what Allah has decreed upon, like, I mean, playing that game, like, if, if the argument from the U... The argument from the U.S. government side should be like, F you, we don't play religious games here in the government. That's what the answer should be. Because if the answer is like, no, we're, if they win because Islam has not mandated this, they have lost. It might look like a win, but it's a loss. Because we have said that because Allah has not mandate this, mandated this, therefore you lose Muslim. But then this Muslim might lose, but Allah will win. Because yeah. we have now recognized the authority of Allah yeah, we have legitimized Islam. You know, the the United States government has recognized the legitimacy and authority of Allah. So, you know, like, the answer should be like, if you, this is, our laws is not based on Islam. That's what it should be. I mean, that should be the answer. Isn't no, it going to be an easy win? Otherwise, we'll end yeah. up with a situation like we had in India where the Supreme Court is going over Quranic verses to decide if it's actually obligatory to wear the hijab or not, which is completely inappropriate in an actually secular state.
So I guess the solution is just we go off of what that random person says is mandatory to them. But then that seems no. so absurd at the same time. It, it shouldn't matter what's mandatory. It's your religion. We have our rules. Why should we care about what's mandatory within Islam? Because it sh- it should be- the government, we have legal mandates to provide accommodations for people's religious practices, as long as it does not have an undue burden on the employer. Okay, but this one has, okay? So, I mean, uh, yeah. So religious. Wait, so say that again. According religious to power. our Civil Rights Act and the okay. precedent of legal yes. standards, American employers right. have the mandate to provide accommodations for their employees' religious beliefs as long as it does not imbue an undue burden on them. So religious beliefs means any religious beliefs they have, whether or not. That's okay if they say that, as long as it doesn't require for you to go check scripture. Like you can say like, that should be, if that's the case, you should be like, well, my religious belief is that, I don't know, um, I get to wear, wear um, oh yeah, a spaghetti, like a, um, a pasta whatever, strainer. what is that? A pasta strainer, right? Um, or, I don't know, like a, a symbol of the flying spaghetti monster. So it doesn't matter whether it's in Islam or not, okay? You should be able to make stuff up as long as that's your religious belief um, and it doesn't um, come, come, you know, put anyone in danger. They should respect it, right? I just don't want them, I just don't want the U.S. government to be involved in figuring out what's Islamic or what's is un-Islamic. Like going through Islamic scripture and figuring out like, oh, the U.S. government is recognized this as part of Islam or not part of Islam, okay? No, no, no. As long as the guy... Invested in that th- at all. Yeah. So they should... So anybody with any random belief should be able to say like, you know what? I f- I My religious belief says that I, sh- I shouldn't be wearing underwear, okay? So I'm just going to wear pants but with no under- underwear underneath because that's my religious belief. You should take that as seriously as any other religious belief as long as somebody claims that that's their religious belief. And if not wearing underwear is not going to put anybody at risk, you know, for uh, uh, put the security forces at risk, then she's like, okay, sure. Everybody else wears underwear. You, sir, you could wear no underwear because that's your religious belief. So we're going to let you do that, right? Mm -hmm. So, but if you could come up with the slightest, with the slightest reason for why that would be a problem for someone doing their work, then that should not be accepted, even the slightest. So I think a long beard being a security threat, that's good enough to tell this guy to go F himself. You have such what? a way with words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I think so. I feel like no. You know, we said beers are secure. <laughs> Just go. Just go. <laughs> oh my god. That should oh be the God. official position of the US government saying go yeah. F yourself. It's just kind of interesting to me that like I don't know, the standard of just someone being like, yeah, so this is mandatory in my religion, so you have to accommodate this. Like, that's the threshold, right? It's... Right. That's kind of wild to me. We don't get that privilege. Yeah. Also, a pasta strainer would not be a security risk at all, unlike a beard. You could take that thing out and hit something <laughs> in there. <laughs> okay, that's got to be weapon. against uniform code, though. <laughs> oh. <laughs> No, but, but, I, this is really but, funny. I mean, it's, more, it's safer. Oh, go ahead. Pakistani Defense Force is saying the Taliban say that the beard is mandatory in D.C. And remember, no beard makes you a woman. <laughs> yeah. If no, I man, just without a beard, men could think that you look yeah. kind of like a woman and get turned on by you, and that's no bueno. So you got to cut that off, grow that out, get a real scraggly. <laughs> yeah, you're tempting women with your with your masculine beards, guys, and men. Yeah. And then, yeah. With those baby soft okay. cheeks. <laughs> Get my best-selling book, Why There Is No God, for free. Click on the link for it in the description.